Today we will discuss about how to calculate post-test probability with help of likelihood ratios. To understand this concept, suppose you go to a town where it has been snowing for last few days. Now you are worried about next week. Somebody from that town tells you about patterns of snowfall in that area. After we know patterns of snowfall, we can calculate probability of snowfall during next week. Such calculations are based on principles of Bayes theorem. According to this theorem, if we have prior information or knowledge of conditions related to an event, we can calculate probability of that event. Like in this case, if we know patterns of snowfall in past, we can calculate probability of snowfall during next week. Similarly, if we know pretest probability of disease with help of information from diagnostic test, we can calculate post-test probability of disease. First, we estimate pretest probability, then we calculate likelihood ratios with help of sensitivity and specificity of test and then we can calculate post-test probability. So we have three components of this formula. That is pre-test probability, likelihood ratios and post-test probability. We will discuss all these components in detail. Actual formula based on Bayes theorem is pre-test odds and multiplying it with likelihood ratios we get result in post-test odds. So first we estimate pre-test probability and then convert pre-test probability to pre-test odds. And when we get results in post-test odds, we again convert post-test odds to post-test probability. So first of all, let's discuss about pre-test probability. Pre-test probability is estimation of probability of presence of a disease before we have performed a diagnostic test. Information from history, physical examination, results of previous diagnostic test and prevalence of disease help us in estimation of pre-test probability. For calculation of post-test probability, we need to estimate pre-test probability in percentage. Some typical signs and symptoms can significantly affect pre-test probability. Like presence of guarding and rigidity on abdominal examination are highly suggestive of peritonitis and will significantly increase pre-test probability of peritonitis. So presence or absence of these signs and symptoms can significantly affect pretest probability. As pretest probability is based on several parameters, so two observers can estimate different pretest probability for same clinical situation. In some situations like DVT and pulmonary embolism, we have scoring systems and based on these scoring systems, we can calculate exact percentage of pretest probability with less inter-observer variation. In this diagram, we can see different threshold points at different levels of pretest probability. First threshold point is testing threshold. If pretest probability is below this point, we do not perform diagnostic test for that condition. Like if we have 25 year old previously healthy male patient with one day history of fever, cough and right sided pleuritic chest pain, we will not perform diagnostic test for acute coronary syndrome. On the other hand, if pretest probability is significantly high and it is beyond treatment threshold, we can start treatment even before we have performed a diagnostic test. Like in presence of fever, headache, photophobia and neck stiffness, we can start treatment for meningitis 
even before we have performed a diagnostic test. However, in majority of cases, we need to perform a test to establish or confirm a diagnosis. These threshold points are different for different diseases and depend on nature of condition, severity of condition and adverse effect of treatment. After we have estimated pretest probability, we calculate likelihood ratios. As we know with many diagnostic tests, test result can be positive or it can be false negative in presence of disease. So a positive or negative test result cannot confirm or exclude disease in all cases. Likelihood ratios tell us to what extent a positive or negative test result affects pretest probability. Likelihood ratios are actually ratios of two likelihoods or two probabilities. That is probability of test result in person with disease to probability of test result in person who is healthy. These ratios are calculated based on sensitivity and specificity of test. Suppose we have a diagnostic test with sensitivity of 80% and specificity of 90%. Based on this test, probability of positive test result in presence of disease is 80% that is also equal to two positive results. And probability of positive test result in person who is healthy is 10% that is also equal to false positive results. And ratio of these two probabilities is equal to positive likelihood ratio. In this case, it will be 80 ratio 10 or 8 ratio 1. Similarly, probability of negative test result in presence of disease is 20% that is also equal to false negative results and probability of negative test result in person who is healthy is 90% that is also equal to true negative results. So negative likelihood ratio is ratio of false negative to true negative results. That in this case will be 20 ratio 90 or 2 ratio 9. So positive likelihood ratio is ratio of true positive to false positive results. We can simply calculate positive likelihood ratio by dividing positive test result in disease by positive test result in healthy. So this will give us positive likelihood ratio of 8. This positive likelihood ratio of 8 means that positive test result is 8 times more likely to be present in person with disease than in a person who is healthy. Similarly, negative likelihood ratio is ratio of false negative to true negative results. That in this case will be 20 ratio 90 or 2 ratio 9. We can simply calculate negative likelihood ratio by dividing negative test result in disease by negative test result in healthy. This will give us negative likelihood ratio of 0.2. This means negative test result is 4.5 times more likely to be present in person who is healthy than a person who has disease. Formula for calculation of positive likelihood ratio is usually mentioned as sensitivity divided by 1 minus specificity. So if we have a diagnostic test that has 80% sensitivity, sensitivity in this case will be 80 and 1 minus sensitivity will be 20 that is also equal to false negative results. Similarly, if specificity of test is 90%, specificity in this case will be 90 and 1 minus specificity is 10 that is also equal to false positive results. 
So we can also calculate positive and negative likelihood ratio if formula is based on sensitivity and specificity of a test. So when we calculate post-test odds, positive likelihood ratio of 8 will result in 8-fold increase in pre-test odds, while negative likelihood ratio of 0.2 will result in 4.5-fold decrease in pre-test odds. In next step, we need to convert pre-test probability to pre-test odds. For that, we need to understand what is difference in probability and odds. Probability that an event will occur is estimated in percentage or fraction. Suppose probability that an event will occur is 60% or 0.6. Probability that same event will not occur will be 1 minus probability and it will be equal to 0.4 or 40% in this case. On the other hand, odds are calculated by probability that an event will occur divided by probability that same event will not occur. So if we have probability that an event will occur of 60% or 0.6, odds of same event will be 1.5. Now suppose we have a condition with pretest probability of 60% or 0.6. We can calculate pretest odds from pretest probability with help of this formula. And pretest odds in this situation will be 1.5. So pretest odds is 1.5 and we have already calculated positive and negative likelihood ratios. Now we can calculate post-test odds with help of this formula that is based on Bayes theorem. Formula for calculation of post-test odds is pretest odds multiplied by likelihood ratios. So if test result is positive, we have pretest odds of 1.5 and likelihood ratio of positive test is 8 and it will result in post test odds of 12 that is 8 fold increase in pretest odds if test result is negative we have pretest odds of 1.5 and negative likelihood ratio is 0.2 and it will give us post test odds of 0.3 Now in final step, we will convert post-test odds to post-test probability. Formula for calculation of probability from odds is odds divided by 1 plus odds. So if test result is positive, post-test odds of 12 will result in post-test probability of 92%. And if test result is negative, post-test odds of 0.3 will result in post-test probability of 24%. So with this test, if test result is positive, it will result in increase in pre-test probability from 60% to post-test probability of 92%. And if test result of this test is negative, it will decrease pre-test probability from 60% to 24%. So with help of likelihood ratios, we can calculate what is effect of positive or negative test result on pretest probability. If we know pretest probability and likelihood ratios, we can find post-test probability with help of nomogram without performing any calculations. In this nomogram left column, has different levels of pretest probability. Middle column has scale for likelihood ratios, and right column has different levels of post test probability. To find post test probability with help of nomogram, suppose we have 
pretest probability of 50% and positive likelihood ratio of 10. First, we will draw a line from pretest probability of 50% to likelihood ratio of 10. Then a straight line from here to third column will tell us post test probability. So in this case, post test probability is around 90%. So we can find post test probability with help of nomogram without performing any calculations if we know pretest probability and likelihood ratios. Now let's compare our findings with nomogram. We had pretest probability of 60% and positive likelihood ratio was 8. And with help of nomogram, we can see it leads to post test probability of around 92%. And when we calculated post test probability, it was also 92%. Similarly, negative likelihood ratio was 0.2 and it leads to post-test probability of around 24%. And it is same post-test probability that we calculated. Positive likelihood ratio helps in confirmation of disease and negative likelihood ratio helps in ruling out disease. We also have treatment threshold point at scale of post-test probability. In our example, post-test probability of even negative test is above treatment threshold point. So we can either start treatment or we can perform another test. If likelihood ratio is 1, it will not result in any change in pretest probability. So for any level of pretest probability, post-test probability will be same as pre-test probability. In this table, we can see approximate change in pre-test probability with different values of likelihood ratios. In summary, with help of likelihood ratios, we can find what is effect of positive or negative test result on pre-test probability. First, we estimate pretest probability, then we calculate likelihood ratios, then we can either calculate post test probability or we can find post test probability with the help of nomogram. We calculated post test probability with likelihood ratio of one test, however, we can combine likelihood ratios of more than one test to calculate post test probability as well. If result of a test is in continuous variable, likelihood ratios of subsets of test result can also be calculated if sensitivity and specificity of these subsets are available.